So there are some things we have to talk about when it comes to this covered call, dividend income focused investing that you guys see on my channel and that a lot of people have recently got into. Because there's a lot of things that the experts don't talk about and I don't think I personally talk about it enough on my channel. I'm not an expert, but there's some things you guys need to know. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in today's video. So everyone, it's another beautiful day. Welcome to Passive Income Living, where we talk about real estate, stocks, crypto, and financial independence, financial freedom in general. Reason for that, my wife and I were able to reach financial independence by the ages of 28. So we just wanna relay all that information to you guys in hopes it can help you reach your financial goals sooner. This is what I get to do three, four times a week in early retirement or financial freedom, whatever you wanna call it. But what a lot of people fail to understand about the covered call income focus strategy is the erosion of capital. And what this means is that majority of these high paying ETFs don't grow very much in terms of appreciation. And the reason for that is because they're paying out majority of their gains to their shareholders in forms of dividend. And this actually has an effect on the appreciation of the price. Now, there can be something made that if you're constantly reinvesting those dividends, that, that compounded growth may actually create appreciation. However, this strategy is so new that not one person can really say that with 100% certainty. Obviously, if you reinvest in the S&P 500, then that has proven over the last 50, 60 years that it does appreciate as well as pay very little dividend. Now, what you guys need to understand is I show my $450,000 portfolio that is mainly income focused, but what I don't really show, and I don't know why I don't show up, maybe I'll start showing it, is my growth portfolio before that, right? So I do have a growth portfolio that is about $140,000, and this is made up of growth stocks, Bitcoin ETFs, Ethereum ETFs, Shopify, uh, SCHD, Tesla, Tesla cover calls, stuff like that. Things that I believe in for the future. This needs to be a part of your portfolio, not necessarily those stocks in particular, but you need to have growth in your portfolio as well. Because what's gonna happen is sooner or later, you're gonna need to start taking out those funds to live off. And then you're gonna start seeing your portfolio value go down quite a bit. So that's why you wanna make sure that you always have growth in your portfolio as well. So when you're getting started, if you're, if you're a newbie investor, really liking these monthly dividends you're getting, one thing you should also do is put some of the funds that you're allocating towards this dividend portfolio to some growth funds as well. And what I mean by that is, you know, here in Canada, you can buy things like Enbridge, Bank of Nova Scotia, TD Bank, uh, Canadian National Railway, Waste Connections. In the States, you got Apple, right? You got JP Morgan. You got all the pipeline companies and stuff like that. You wanna add those in your portfolio as well, simply because those are gonna give you growth as well as a dividend. But then you're also buying those cover call ETFs that are gonna pay you more that you're gonna reinvest. So you can really do the best of both worlds especially when you're young and starting out, what you should not be doing is just putting all your money into covered calls if you're young, because what's gonna happen is you're actually, I, I personally don't think you're gonna get the growth that you would get from a 50-50 strategy or even a 60-40 strategy. Now, what we do, and we've been doing this for five plus six years now, is that, oh, by the way, isn't this beautiful? I walk this beach every single morning almost. But what we do is we invest majority of our money in real estate. And the reason for that is because real estate has worked for us. Real estate is really what made us multimillionaires and allowed us to reach financial independence by the ages of 28. So real estate's been good to us and that's why we're always gonna continue to reinvest in it. But we also like to diversify. So our cover call dividend focused portfolio, the one that I publish every single month, is mainly just like a holding, um, a holding account. That money, the $450,000, I'll sell like that if I find the right real estate deal. And the reason, because real estate deal will give me a 15 to 20 plus return, plus it's gonna give me appreciation. So I'm getting that compounded growth, plus I get to use leverage, which I'm very comfortable using. It's not for everybody. So what I see on a lot of these, these newbie investors and stuff like that, and these people publishing this cover call strategy is they're just saying how great it is. 
But what you have to understand is that you cannot get the best of both worlds. You actually need to modify your portfolio if you want. So with something like HYLD, you're not necessarily going to get the growth of the S&P 500 and a 10 to 14% dividend yield. It's, it's practically impossible. You're not going to get it, right? So that's why it's, it would be good to invest in something like SCHD or VFV plus HYLD. So you're getting the growth from the index funds and from the ETF, and then you're also getting the dividends from the covered call strategy. And that's personally what we like to do. So I probably will publish my growth portfolio very soon. Um, but that's not to say that there aren't certain cover call ETFs that you won't get growth from. For example, purpose investment yield shares, the Apple, the Google, and the Tesla. I invested in those and they have grown a lot and they probably will continue to grow as long as Apple and um, Google and Tesla grow as well. There's things like HTA and HTAE, which is tech focused. That's always gonna grow because tech seems to always be growing. But things like HMAX, which is bank stocks, they might not grow as much simply because they're paying out all of their capital, all of the money they're making from their cover calls to the investors and dividends. So that's why it's good to own something like HMAX and you know BK, but then also own individual stocks of Bank of Nova Scotia, TD Bank, JP Morgan, whatever it is. Again, this is my opinion. It's not financial advice. This is just what I personally like doing, guys. And for me, it's worked. And it's really between stocks and real estate, it really made us multimillionaires and allowed us to reach financial independence by the age of 28. So I want to share the information with you guys. If you get value, smash the like button for you to the algorithm. And if you did get and enjoyed this content, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.